Hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com. Today is Friday, January 27th, 2016, and uh, we're going to get to the Bitamount newsletter and see how things did last week on eBay and point out a couple of uh, things that are going on right now, stuff you might be able to use. Uh, so let's get started. First things first, um, I mentioned this last week, it was in the newsletter, is uh, this outfit uh, over in the Netherlands, Oriental Art Auctions. They're having a sale uh, online. It's an online sale only of uh, leaving bids from January 20th through February 3rd in the Netherlands. There are uh, nice folks out there. My, one of my friends over there messaged me on Facebook the other day and let me know about the sale. Uh, they handle the shipping. Their shipping charges are very reasonable. Um, I don't know how they do it, actually, but uh, if you check their shipping rates for things uh, well within the boundaries that we'd pay or be more than happy to pay with it from an eBay purchase, I can tell you that. And uh, here are some of the items. There's some Yuan pieces. There's some Sung pieces. There's some nice early blue and white, which you expect to find on, in auctions from the Netherlands, seeing as that was sort of ground zero for the importation of it all at the beginning. Uh, there's a nice Wan Lee bowl here, a crack bowl. Uh, there it is. Uh, nicely done, beautiful looking, slightly misshaped, sort of oblong, but but pretty typical of these with minor fritting around the rim. It mentions there's an old uh, small rim repair or fill somewhere. Uh, I can't see it, but uh, they do mention it. There's the bottom of it and the whole thing. Reasonably estimated, four to six hundred uh, 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 euros. Uh, I think that's a perfectly fine price to pay for that. And uh, there's a bunch more on there, so check them out. Go over there and take a look. Alrighty, it's the online winter sale, and uh, register, registration's easy, and uh, buy yourself some stuff for your collection or for your inventory. Now, over to eBay, uh, the ceramics and collectibles. These are the fellows on there that always have 1,500, 1,600 things. They do a mix of auction and uh, buy it now items. This was an auction item. Nice looking Kang Shi dish with uh, figures, uh, an elder and, and a younger person playing Go and having a bowl of tea with uh, somebody looking over their shoulder. Uh, looks like he's carrying somebody in his arms, a small child perhaps, right there, okay. At any rate, it was a nice looking dish and in pretty much perfect condition and went for $698. So it was a good addition to somebody's collection. And these guys, as I mentioned, are also in the Netherlands. And then we had this, this beautiful, it was a Wang Hing silver repousé box. It was from a, a, a seller up in Maine here in New England. Uh, nice, nice example of the uh, repousé and well chased all the way around. Has an, had an inscription on the bottom. It was evidently a uh, presentation box of somebody uh, that they had won. A handicap competition, December 26, 1900. All right, and uh, it went for $960. Uh, pretty fair price for those. Chinese silver in the last couple of years is getting gaining a lot of momentum, a lot of interest from collectors. And then we had uh, this seller. This is a, a fellow up in, uh, in Maine, that, uh, in Portland, Maine, that we follow, Awasian 8. And uh, he had uh, a collection on here of bird feeders, porcelain bird feeders. Chinese porcelain bird feeders are very collectible. There's always interest in them. And they're quite small, as you might imagine. They're tiny, and they clipped onto the sides of the inside of bird cages. And they went, uh, and it, they were sort of all in the $100 to $200 range, which is pretty much uh, where they are these days. Some of them, if they're marked or have signatures on the bottom, they bring a lot more. Uh, they can bring up to $1,000 pretty easily. But this was a nice collection, and uh, this guy always has interesting things. And then we have uh, this, the Kangxi uh, wine ewer. Um, they, 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 they call these uh, teapots. They're not teapots, they're wine pots. And that was a, this was sort of a nice one. Had its original cover, nice handle. I didn't see anything broken on it. Often, this, as you might imagine, after a few hundred years, these uh, necks or handles get snapped off somehow and um, get reattached. This one it wasn't the case and uh, did pretty well. Brought $511, all right? And this was from a, a seller, a new seller, Old Arts Antique Store. I don't know much about him. He's in Canada. Uh, hopefully, he'll keep looking and putting up good things. We had this uh, was featured also last week. This was a nice little scholar's item, a, a, a robin's egg blue with a chimera, uh, a, a beautiful looking little uh, brush pot, ink pot, and uh, blow that up. Good color on this, and this looks like a late 19th century one to me. Nice color, 
uh, well potted, very neatly done. Nice looking foot on it, flat, turquoise bottom, pretty typical of the period. And uh, it was a good buy for somebody, I think, $182. Um, uh, better buy for the, it was better for the buyer than for the seller. These often can bring upwards of double that. So I think, I think somebody got a pretty good deal on it. Uh, you know, when you see these things, I've said this a million times, often people don't leave bids on things. And we're going to see an example coming up of something that went, a couple of things that just went way under the money last week. And I think because people prejudge it and think it's going to go through the roof at the very end. I don't know. But, and they didn't. So somebody got a steal. Uh, but this was a nice thing. This was put up by Woolworths, um, W-W-O-L-S-T. They're in Rhode Island. They're fairly large uh, antique auction uh, outfit sellers down there. Uh, they've got 48,000 feedbacks. They know what they're doing. And they get good things. The guy's been a dealer for a long time. And they had this. They had this wonderful Dwanstone uh, uh, screen. Uh, often these are, these are sold by auctioneers and live auctions as carved soapstone. They're not. This is Dwanstone. This is the same kind of rock they use to carve uh, uh, ink stones. And sometimes they color them and they work with them and create beautiful screens. And they're highly collected, highly collected. And most of the ones you run into are made in the latter part of the 19th century. They made them earlier, but not often. But, but the quality of them is exceptional. And this one brought $3,420, which is a good price for that. Uh, they can bring more. Uh, but this was a nice one. So, good, bravo. This was one of the things I thought was a bargain. This is a silver form, very rare, silver form uh, porcelain blue and white. And done in the, very much in the Chinese taste in a lot of ways. Um, <laughs> gravy boat but it looks just like the silver examples that you might have seen from Europe and uh, it had a small chip on the spout you can't see it here and a little nick somewhere else something really tiny and I think people saw this and just thought it would bring a lot of money because it's a rare form and they stayed away from it um, if you stayed away because of the tiny chip on the spout uh, you, you, you made a mistake because that's a that's something that's expected and is easily fixed so um, you know, always leave a bid on these things when they come up. It went for $108, all right? You know, I think a lot of people looked at this and assumed it would bring four to six hundred, five to seven hundred, and they just didn't bother leaving a bid. Big mistake, <laughs> I think, anyway. Um, and then we had this. This was a very nice pair of a sort of noir, famille rose uh, cups. What was nice about them was I love the fact that they had their original case. Here's a presentation case that it came with. Here's the bottom of it. There are the cups. Here they were. They had chin lung marks on them. They're obviously not chin lung. It doesn't matter. Um, but there are the stands, the little cup stands that they stood on. And it makes a great package for collectors. Uh, Chinese packaging is the whole other art to itself. It goes back historically uh, into the early Qing dynasty. There are books about Qing packaging, and uh, uh, especially for porcelain. Very, very interesting subject. And the whole set went for $450. Then this was the one of the other bargains of the week, I think, was this. This beautiful mother of pearl uh, carved snuff or patch box with silver mounts on it. Went very, very reasonably. I was shocked by this. These usually bring two to 400 depending on the style and the condition. Um, we've had them over the years and done very well with them. And this one went for almost nothing, uh, $84. Somebody got a great buy. Um, uh, C'est la vie. As I said a minute ago, always leave a bid. Always leave a bid. All right. Then we had the rank badge. I like this rank badge a lot. I thought this was a really nice one. Um, very good silk work on it. Um, had some little coral coming up out of the waves and all the uh, rue heads and the flowers and bats and peaches hanging down over it. It had everything in it. And uh, went for a good price. Went for a very good price. $1,136. Not a big surprise. It was a nice, nice rank badge. And then you had this. These, this is a, in an area of collecting that more and more people are becoming aware of. In the early 20th century, uh, there was sort of a fashion among the big retailers and specialty shops in New York. Yamanaka Company did it. They would take old pieces of Chinese uh, objects, jade archer rings like these, for example, and turn them into salt and pepper shakers and mount them with silver. Um, they can be unmounted if you want. But it's a, a genre of collecting that's uh, gaining a lot of interest. They also made ink stands and ink sets out of them, and there were a number of companies that did them. And these did quite well. They brought uh, $770, um, but nice examples and have a bit of a story to tell. 
And then there was the big uh, Chinese uh, robe. This is not an imperial court robe, it's sort of a wealthy upper class person's robe from the uh, early 20th century. You know, some dragons and whatnot on it, nice gilt thread. And it appeared to be in very nice condition. Um, but this is a, you know, probably an early 20th century robe, looking at this, the way this is done. The waves at the bottom are done. Um, but nice, nice example. And I uh, bought $775. All right. And then last but not least is this. It was this jade, uh, carved jade snuff bottle. Uh, I like this. He said it was 19th century. I think it was probably 18th. But um, you, you know, buyers can decide that. Uh, this is a good example. Nicely carved. Cover, lid's probably not original to it, but beautiful quality carving in good condition, and it did well. It brought $2,027, but it was a nice little snuff bottle with good age to it. All right, and that's about it. Um, one, one last thing I wanted to touch on. I had mentioned last week that we've been fooling around with building some sort of a, a, an app for uh, dealers and collectors to have on their uh, handheld devices. Because one of the big problems, this is what we're, we're coming up with, is that when you're out in the field, if you're at an auction house or you're uh, at a, a shop or a gallery and you see something and you say, I've seen that before, I want to look that up. Getting into a major auction house um, a website or looking at old catalogs and whatnot, getting to a museum website can be difficult. And um, here's, a, you know, here's what we've done. is We've taken a page um, from each of these and we've created a list of direct links into the departments of all these museums and so forth. There's more on this page, I can't scroll down it. But it goes right into, like Chinese Jade at the Cleveland Art Museum, right into the Fair Sackler Gallery's um, uh, Korean collection. So you can go there instantly and look something up. Uh, on, the, uh, on, our home, on our page, on this, on this page here, we set up a section uh, of links to uh, the stuff you most likely want to look at on our site like the, you have the Christie's catalogs going back years, the Bonhams catalogs, the John, image archives, stuff that you can run to for quick reference while you're out there in the field. And if you click on this, um, it'll pull you over to our uh, uh, Christie's page, for example, that has all of the catalogs, and you can look up uh, whatever you need to look up right here. All right? And there's other links on there as well that you might find pretty useful. Also, the thing with rain marks. There's a news feed from the Asian art market. There's about 20 or 15 or 20 news outlets on there and so forth. So uh, we're going to put this up on the site after we do a little more fine tuning. I'll tell you more about it as we go along. All right. So that's it for the week. Everybody have a great weekend, and we'll see you next time. And uh, thanks so much for visiting. Bye-bye.